Rahul, thanks for being here with us this morning. Uh, why don't we begin with you telling me who you are, what you do, and uh, what Manulife Philippines is all about. Sure. And first of all, thank you so much, Regina, for taking this, uh, taking time out to speak to me. And yes, myself, I'm Rahul Hora. As I fondly say that I'm half Filipino because I've been in the Philippines for 15 years. It's been my pleasure and it's always been in the insurance industry. And uh, I, I'm now the CEO and president of Manulife. And Manulife in the Philippines, we've been in the Philippines for 117 years. Primarily into in the insurance industry, but we have other businesses as well in the Philippines. We have five legal entities mm. in the Philippines, which pan across life insurance, asset management. We have a BPO company as well. And we're very proud of our heritage and the fact that we have so many businesses of many life in the Philippines. 117 years, you yes. said. That's Absolutely. a really long time. That's some commitment right there. Yes. yes. Um, where do you see it in the next five years, 10 years? Uh, we will continue <laughs> to be, I think, for another 117 years and counting mm. in the Philippines for sure. And uh, But in the next five years, our key focus areas are that as the needs of the customers are mm. evolving, we are able to uh, position our products and launch our products and propositions to meet those emerging needs of our customers. And I think in the next five years, one of the important trends that we see is health. Mm. Uh, health emergencies, a lack of preparedness of our customers for health emergencies is emerging, is emerging as a very important trend. And we are looking uh, for ourselves to play a very dominant role in the next five years in that space. That's absolutely right. Health yes. is of paramount concern. And talking about evolving customer needs, you recently, or Manulife, put out a study called In Wellness and in Health, which yes. uh, had some pretty, uh, what I would call, uh, sobering findings, um, chief of which is number one, you said younger does not mean healthier. And so talk us through the stats behind this. What sort of uh, illnesses are uh, concerned most Filipinos? So I think two main uh, outcomes or findings which were really surprising for us as well. Uh, you know, we always believe younger is healthier, but uh, statistics and especially our survey showed us that that was not true. And that was quite surprising for us as well. And there's a stat call or there's a number called total sickness, mm. which means uh, you know, how many times in the last 12 months have you been sick? Uh, and to our surprise, uh, for people in the age band of 18 to 29, that was the highest. It was at oh, about wow. 3.4 as compared to an average of about, you know, less than 2 point, about 2.6. So that was quite surprising uh, because we didn't expect that the younger people would be getting sick more often than the older ages. And I think the other surprising aspect which came out of that survey was what is the top concerns of mm. people in this age band? Uh, diabetes amongst the top three was there, which was you know which was quite expected, but anxiety and depression were the two others which came up right up there, as strongly as diabetes, and that was quite a surprising statistics for us. Essentially, these are the consequences of the the modern lifestyle. Right. Uh, diabetes, yeah. as the top one was concerned, does not seem surprising to me. But the mental health part came in second, you said? Yes, yes. Uh, well, mental health came up second. And I think a lot of other concerns on the lifestyle habits, such mm. as lack of sleep, mm. uh, you know, uh, challenges around exercises, is also coming out as top concerns for our, for our customers. And that's what the survey showed us. Is the general perception still that I don't have time to exercise. Do most people still think that way? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Your bad target. Uh, one was that. The other one uh, was that uh, it's painful or it's 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 inconvenient, which is which is of course there. But I think the other challenge is also uh, the time availability. Mm. I think uh, I'm sure you would know and you appreciate the amount of traffic and I think mm. the amount of travel that people have to do to go to work and come back has gone up substantially over the last few years. And that is really challenging people to find time for their well-being and exercise. And that's came up very strongly in the survey. And I think the other one is also accessibility, mm. convenience of accessibility, whether it's safely places for people to walk 
or do even some simple exercises is a challenge which again came out in the survey quite strongly. Well, that, you're definitely right. The lack of walkable areas is a very sore point for Filipinos who live in the metro, right? Yes. Uh, let's talk about your key finding number two, which is that um, you know there are a lot of barriers holding Filipinos back from committing to a healthier lifestyle, uh, which you'd already touched on a little bit. But what are some of the other misconceptions out there? about keeping a uh, specifically about keeping healthy diets why is it so difficult for most people i think uh, a few things which came up uh, in our survey was one uh, overall there is awareness right people appreciate that healthy diet is important mm. and also a strong 33 percent of the people understand and realize that their diets currently is not considered to be mm. healthy. So they understand the importance and they also realize that the you know diet is not healthy. Uh, but in order to make that switch, what are the biggest concerns? Top three concerns are, one, a lot of people believe that it's expensive. Mm. Almost 56% of our respondents said that eating healthy is typically more expensive. Almost right? 60. 56, yeah, almost, no, almost, 56, no, almost 50, oh, uh, 56%. Majority. Okay. Yes, and then second, a lot of people said that, uh, you know, the uh, accessibility of food is, of course, a challenge. And then, of course, it doesn't taste good. Healthy eating does <laughs> not taste good, which is, I would say, agree to a large extent. But again, uh, finding a healthy food uh, conveniently is, is a challenge. I think most of the... Uh, food which is easily accessible to our customers is considered unhealthy. So I think these are the top three concerns which are coming up, which is expensive, you know, does not taste good, and the third one is that not easily available, you know, the healthy diets. So these are the top three concerns that our customers are facing. Uh, I suppose it's not surprising that most people are aware that the diets that they're consuming are generally not healthy on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, is any, did anything come up in the study that showed that people are at least trying to make an effort uh, with the cost, for instance? How do you get around an issue like that? Because it's true, you walk into a supermarket and some of the cheapest food are in packages. Yes. Right? Yeah, Boxed absolutely. up, in cans, in cartons. So, so how do you go about that? If you're living a modern lifestyle, you're too busy, you're taking care of two kids, uh, you just don't have time to you know, make things from scratch. Yes, you're right, and that's exactly what came out in our study as well. You know, all the things that you mentioned are challenges. Uh, most of the food available is not healthy, which is cheap. Uh, I think the most important aspect is that people have started realizing that there needs to be a shift. You know, there needs to be a change, and that's what I think is quite promising, which is coming out in our survey. And uh, I think if you, with that increased awareness. And because customers are looking for those kind of healthy diets, I think we are seeing a trend emerging where a lot of more and more options of healthy diet, mm. more and more uh, knowledge of what exactly constitutes a healthy diet is coming up as well. And that is where we believe that a lot of our friends in media are also helping us to bring that message to our customers that yes, healthy diet is uh, you know uh, available and over a period of time, there'll be more and more access to that kind of a diet for our customers. And well, I mean, vegetables are still relatively cheap, so that's well, it's just <laughs> it, it doesn't tick the third box, which is that it doesn't taste good. Okay, I get it. Uh, the third key finding in your studies um, has to do with how Filipinos fund medical expenses. So how do they? And second to that, what do they look for in uh, insurance policies? Sure. I think one of the biggest concerns we have in the Philippines is what we call as the health protection gap, you know. Mm. And what it means is that what percentage of the health expense is coming out of out of pocket. And the most surprising thing is that even if Philipp we compare Philippines with other similar countries like Indonesia, like Thailand, like Vietnam, the health protection gap for us is one of the most significant. It's almost as close to 50% depending on which year, you know, we look at those data. And that is a big concern, which means that our fellow Filipinos are not financially prepared to deal with medical emergencies, you know, and that is loud and clear. And that is where we as insurance companies and insurance partners want to play a role and intend to play that role because we offer products which fill that gap, you know. 
and uh, there are other research findings which are which we are getting on what kind of products are the customers looking for so there are a few inputs to us as an insurance company that they're looking for products which are more oriented towards the whole family mm. so that one product enables them to protect the whole family rather than an individual as it has been in the past and the other one is also uh, specific to certain diseases kind of you know medical products but as manulife we are extremely passionate that this protection gap that we have in the philippines need to be narrowed down mm. we need to ensure that our fellow filipinos are able to protect themselves and their loved ones with an insurance product which helps them to deal with the financial strain which a medical emergency brings to them that is a very big problem to try to solve and it's been an age old issue right uh, there's a huge healthcare protection gap and one of the statistics that stood out to me in your report said filipino savings there's a massive disparity between what filipinos are saving versus how much they think they need to save over the next 10 years. Well, they say their existing health coverage is sufficient, but they cover it out of pocket. Yes. Uh, has that, I mean, trend-wise, has that is, is that changing uh, from what you've seen? And is that getting better? Is that getting worse? What it's are the getting statistics better. telling us? It's getting better. I think over the last five years that we've been tracking that number, the health protection gap was in 52, 53 percentage level. Now it has gone down to below 50. So it's trending in the right direction. Okay. That's that's one is good news. Okay. And I think it has a lot to do with the awareness. And of course, uh, as an insurance company, we are promoting our products and we have a lot of our advisors which are reaching out to customers to educate them on this, you know, on this mm. very important matter. And, um, and I think uh, COVID was one big change, mm. you know, because the impact of COVID was so high and the uh, customers got really concerned about the uh, about the vulnerability, th the fact that they are prone to critical illnesses, right. and the mm. cost associated with that. Right. It really came up mm. top of mind for the customers because of COVID, and we've seen quite a change in the behavior of our customers post COVID. Other uh, factors are overall because the economy of the Philippines is doing well on a year-on-year -year basis there is larger affordability in our customers to buy products which are in, which enable them to protect themselves so all these factors one is leading uh, the protection gap in the right direction right. it's getting narrower okay. as the year proceeds but still it's a very very long way to go yeah. and that is where you know more education mm. uh, more variety of products which fits the needs of our customers are all in the making and will be unraveling in the next you know few years to come which will further improve the protection gap that we're talking about yeah and also apart from the protection gap when you look at uh, insurance penetration on the whole as well it's pretty dismal it's still under two percent so i think uh, new technology has a very important role to play primarily because it allows us to educate a larger you know group of customers a larger scale of customers and faster and a lot of information can be provided bite size now because of technology and i think that's that's a big big change which is happening historically all insurance companies have always been dependent on creating that education through our advisors which is a one on one uh, interaction right. which is very labor intensive which is very labor intensive mm. it is you know uh, or uh, the traditional marketing you know tools were billboards and you know where yes you can you can the message is not complete and it's not comprehensive. It's, it's difficult to, you know, communicate that knowledge through those kind of right. uh, mass media uh, channels. But uh, technology and the ability to bring that message to many, many people in bite size has really transformed the way we educate our customers. And I think that's extremely important. Some of the other things that we are possibly working on, not only as Manulife, but as an industry is, how can we possibly provide some incentives to customers to invest in products like health so we are working with our government authorities and regulators mm. to see if there are possible tax benefits mm. that we can provide for a customer who invests into in a product like that right. but if that happens over the next coming years then that could be another step change in that in the right direction and it could really make a big difference well the incentives might work because yes. it might address the question of uh, affordability uh, but in terms of um, tailoring the products to the consumers 
what sort of emotion do you find works? Does scaring people work? Does appealing to them work? You touched on a little bit about uh, uh, consumers wanting a more holistic, family-oriented product. What, what is driving that uh, motivation? I think uh, one is affordability because if uh, just simple uh, example, right? I mean, if a, if if a uh, health insurance product costs, let's say, X amount, and if there are two members of the family or four members of the family, then if an individual insurance product has to be bought for all, it is four times the X, which is you know probably out of the range of affordability. But if that just is that one single X is covering the entire family and it will come to use to the first family member who goes through a critical illness experience, then in the same budget, you can protect a larger mm. part of your family or a you know, larger number of members of your family. So that's, that's where the thinking is coming from. And as insurance companies, we are listening to our customers. Mm. We are developing products which caters to customers for the entire you know, family in one product rather than f uh, buying individual, individual products. Needs, that's yes. right. Because we've got different needs, even though, for instance, I've got two yes. kids. I mean, they have vastly different needs than I do. Um, one other barrier that we haven't touched on is there seems to be a wide perception around here that it's hard to claim from insurance. I don't know if you've heard this, but I've certainly heard mm -hmm. this from people that I know that they feel like, okay, I can buy insurance, but then when it comes time to use it, will I be able to... Uh, make my claims as per the, you know, the policy's uh, promise. So, so how do you go about addressing something like that? Uh, I, I, would, I would say the claims is an integral part of our promise. So uh, we, we do not have that experience. The only experience that we have around that is where sometimes it gets difficult to put together all the documentation which is required for the claims. And again, we are, we are depending a lot on technology uh, we even as a company have a concierge mm. where anybody who even intimates to us that there is a claim, we are the ones who reach out to the customer to ask, uh, you know, uh, and to help them navigate those documentation and oh, tell wow. them what is required mm. and how is it that they can secure those documents, are the documents complete or not, so that we are able to make that experience, uh, you know, more customer friendly. And uh, so these are the initiatives that we are doing to ensure that we are able to live up to our promise that we have given to our customer. And I think that's very important for us because uh, that brings credibility. And it brings me back to the fact that we've been around for 117 years. Mm. And if we wouldn't have valued credibility and customer trust as much, I'm sure those are the pillars of our existence in the country for, for, the, for that long and we continue to value those things extremely. So, so new technology is not just helping you reach new markets but it's also streamlining your operations in the back end making yes. you more efficient. Yes. yes. Is lowering premiums an option here? I mean again we keep talking we keep coming back to the issue of affordability and if a vast majority cannot afford the premiums or have a misconception about the amount that they have to pay to cover themselves then how do we go about addressing that? I think uh, reducing premiums has one significant challenge and that is medical inflation. Uh, we talk about true. inflation but mm. if you look at medical inflation it's so much higher than even normal inflation. Mm. Uh, we, are talk we are talking of figures in the range of 10 to 12 percent, 13 percent mm. medical inflation. So with that kind of a medical inflation uh, ensuring that the premiums remain low is, is, is a challenge because these two things are pulling in different directions. Uh, but what we are trying to do is, in order for us to ensure that affordability is still there, we are offering products which are specific to certain critical illnesses. Mm. So rather than going for a very comprehensive cover, if you look right. at the top three or four critical illnesses, it constitutes to almost more than 70% of the, you know, uh, critical illness incidents that mm. would happen. Mm. So if we would have a product which covers only those top three and top four diseases, then it allows the customer to get protected, not comprehensive, but partial protection at a lower premium mm. to address mm. that gap or that issue of affordability. So those are the things that we are coming up with. They're even specific to one disease kind of products that we have. Like uh, there is a product that we have which only uh, helps the customer protects against cancer. So those are the you know uh, things that we're doing to address the affordability. 
given the fact that medical inflation continues to be a challenge mm. and, and is... You said it's about 12, 10 to 12%. Where is yeah. it coming from? It's uh, pr primarily it's coming from a lot of new technologies, new ways of mm. treatments which are coming up, which, which are, are expensive. Which to begin moment. with are expensive. Right. Yeah. Then as they, you know, attain scale and popularity and, you know, they become cheaper. That's when it starts cheaper, to get cheaper, but that's cheaper. a long runway. Yes. Yeah, okay. And because there is so much being invested, mm. I think the overall good news is that longevity is going up. Mm. We are indeed living longer. <laughs> it's just more expensive to live that long. Exactly. <laughs> it's more expensive and sometimes we're living longer with more critical illnesses and all hence right. we need to take care of them. But with all the longevity, you know, uh, trends that we are seeing, there is more and more money getting invested in coming up with the right treatments to these medical, you know, uh, critical illnesses. And with all these treatments coming up, they are getting, to begin with, they are expensive. Mm. And that is what drives, you know, the medical inflation up. It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it, in that your healthcare bills will just continue to balloon from here on up. And that's just a reality everywhere in the world, right? Uh, but at the same time, even in this moment in time, people feel they don't have enough money to cover themselves, right? So it's a bit, a bit of a, a push and pull dynamic there. Um, you've touched on education, but what specifically needs to be done at this point in time to try to uh, improve not just Filipinos' awareness, but you know, people everywhere in general, uh, their awareness of how important it is to, to get covered early on? Yeah. I think one is the awareness which I've talked about a lot. The other is there are a few trends which are emerging and which can help us uh, bring down the cost on the lower side. And one of them is teleconsultation. Right? Mm -hmm. For a lot of simple diseases or the fact that I'm not feeling well, you know, uh, I, I just need to get myself checked up. Uh, there are certain simple symptoms that I'm facing. Uh, a lot of times we end up going to the doctors and incurring those high medical expenses, mm. whether individually or for the, you know, for the system. Right. Some of those uh, uh, family medicine kind of consultations are moving towards teleconsultation, mm. which means that you have a doctor on call 24-7 mm. and you can reach out to that doctor even through a video call if there are certain discussions or, you know, uh, and, and that enables the doctor to give you the right advice, even a prescription. And if there is a need for the patient to be seen or to be, you know, taken to a specialist, that is the next step. Mm. But the first step is the primary doctor is through telemedicine. That is where technology is playing a role to bring down the costs of medical, you know, uh, procedures for our, uh, for our customers. Uh, because that is quite a significant part of right. the medical, you know, uh, field. So, and it also eases a lot of the friction for the patient because then you don't have to go out there exactly. take time off work, brave the traffic to see Absolutely. your doctor. Yes. So when we see some of these trends emerging, again, education is an uh, important part of it because a lot of customers are not aware. Mm. Uh, as Manulife, we are mm. bringing these services to our customers free of cost for a certain period mm -hmm. so that we can introduce these services to our customers. And a lot of work is happening in doing that so that uh, you know we are able to in some ways contribute to that pressure or to that problem of increasing medical costs for our customers. Rahul, we've run out of time, but I do want to give you the last word. Uh, what are some of the things that um, people can look forward to in terms of what Manulife is offering, Manulife in the Philippines is offering? Again, trying to uh, connect it to your study in wellness and in health specifically, and the key finding there, which is younger, is not necessarily healthier. So, if you, if that message resonates with you, what can I look forward to as a as a customer, potential customer of my See, life? Um, as I said in the beginning, I've been here for 15 years. <laughs> I'm personally very passionate about the fact that we love to spend as Filipinos. Yes. You know, we love to spend on a lot of gadgets, this, that, for us, for our you know, uh, for our social uh, needs. Uh, my message to all customers is when you're growing up, we have a lot of young population in the country, uh, be responsible. You know, while spending is important, do set aside certain money so that you're able to address the critical needs of yourself and for your loved ones. And for me, that is extremely important. And if you don't know how to do it, reach out to a manual life advisor. We have a lot of very highly trained and qualified advisors around the country 
and our advisors will be very very happy to give you certain give our customers a certain advice on how to go about doing doing that savings or via your messenger I'm absolutely sure. as you were just <laughs> mentioning you do have the uh, automated system yes right? That's yes it. yes thank you so much for your time Rahul Mora, CEO of Manulife Philippines thank you so much